In this video, I'm going to show you how to clean a tankless water heater without buying one of those $140 flushing kits. If this video helps you, please help me by clicking that subscribe button. Before you turn off your water, you're going to need a clean bucket and a clean funnel to do this. So go ahead, find these and wash them with soap and water. Let's start by turning off power to the water heater. Turning off the water to the hot water heater. Because we are not using a recirculating pump to flush this unit, we will need to be able to pull it off the wall. If you're lucky, all you'll need to do is unplug it. But if yours is like mine, it's wired directly to the supply wire inside a junction box near the unit. It's not too hard to disconnect these, and it's worth taking the extra step to avoid needing a flushing kit. After opening the junction box, just remove any tape and undo the wire nuts. Now we need to disconnect the water lines to and from the water heater. It's a good idea to open the hot water tap of a nearby fixture to drain the unit prior to doing this. It's also good to have a towel or bucket under your heater. Let's pull this unit off the wall by removing its two mounting screws. Wow, just in that little bit of water that dripped out of this as I was pulling it off the wall, look at all of the sediment uh, or scaling that ended up on my fingers. That's what's been clogging our pipes and it's why this needs to be cleaned out every so often. Now when you spend $140 for one of the cleaning kits for these tankless water heaters, what you're really buying is a recirculating pump and a bucket with a cleaning solution that will take that cleaning solution and just pass it through this water heater over and over and over again uh, for as long as you run it. And I have no disillusions about this method that I'm about to use. It will not clean this water heater as well as one of those kits. But when I've only got a $200 water heater it doesn't make sense for me to spend $130 to $140 to buy one of those cleaning kits. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to stick this in my bucket like so. And then in case of spillage, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of wrap a towel around this. And then what we're going to do is be our own recirculating pump. And we're going to take distilled white vinegar, which is a fairly good cleaner for these. In fact, some kits just uh, don't even include cleaner. Instead, they just tell you to buy uh, distilled white vinegar. And we're going to just pour it right through this water heater over and over again uh, until we feel like we've made a dent in cleaning it. I can't pour too much at once because when I do it spills over and we do not want to get any vinegar down inside this heater. This is not a quick process. Just remember, 
You're saving about $100 an hour right now. So be patient. I've only done about half of this bottle so far. And I know there's going to be some naysayers out there that are going to say that this didn't work, that I just wasted my time. But I happen to know that I did not waste my time and that this is working. And the reason I know that is because I can see all the sediment that is now in what was a very, very clean bucket. So hopefully it's picking up on the camera, but there is a lot of uh, scaling and grime and what almost looks like dirt uh, in the bottom of this bucket now that was not there before. And that's just from uh, pouring about half of this through there. So am I getting as good of a cleaning as I would if I bought a cleaning kit? No, I'm definitely not. But I am cleaning it and this uh, is definitely better than nothing. And with a $200 water heater, it's uh, worthwhile. One thing that's normally not done when you're using one of those cleaning kits is a reverse flush. But because this is off the wall and all it does, all it takes to reverse flush this thing is simply flipping it over, we're going to go ahead and do the second half of this container backwards. From the hot side to the cold. I can actually flush a little bit faster this way because there's no filter screen as this enters the water heater. The towel, of course, is of the most importance because you are going to spill a little bit out from time to time and you do not want to get the internals of this water heater wet. For round two, we need to refill our vinegar bottle. Now, of course, with all the sediment down in there, uh, we don't want to use all of this water uh, again because we don't want to be pouring that back in, but most of it's settled to the bottom. So just like a recirculating pump would be, we're just going to get some stuff off the top and use it. Um, do it all over again. Now, it's up to you how many times you flush. It really just depends on how much time you have. Um, I'm probably going to do about three times, I think. I'm going to go ahead and start again, going from the cold side. Tell you one thing, I've got some cuts on my fingers. This vinegar burns. So I ended up doing this process a total of three times. One thing I noticed was after the first flush, there wasn't a whole lot more sediment that ended up uh, coming out of the unit. But with by the time I got to the third flush, the overall color of this water had changed and darkened quite a bit. Uh, I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but it's not nearly the clear white color that it was when it started. It's now got a yellowish, uh, dirty tint to it. And so again, that's that's all telling me that this uh, method uh, definitely accomplished something. So now all we have to do is put it back on and uh, try it out. When you get it back together, always run water through your water heater to fill it before flipping the breaker to turn the power back on. I hope this video helped you. If it did, would you mind helping me by clicking the subscribe button? We are a family of six trying to make a life on 90 acres in the Washington Mountains of Arkansas. And every time someone hits that subscribe button, it helps grow our channel and make this life possible for us. We appreciate you.